All right, everybody, and welcome back to our third episode of building a JRPG game here. And in this one, we are going to um, continue on where we left off, uh, left off last time, um, which is uh, pretty much this map here. And we were able to, uh, you know, place our character and we're able to move around our character. And, um, you know, uh, I've been working a, a little bit on our game uh, behind the scenes and I was able to uh, replace our character sprite or our, um, essentially the image with a smaller guy because the, you know, the old guy was a little bit too large and it couldn't really fit through the door, uh, which didn't work quite well. Can this guy actually fit through? Yeah, okay. Um, and I also learned how to do events, right? So. Um, this is what we are going to be working on this time events. So uh, for example, if I approach this young lady here and I hit the space bar, I can actually talk to this person and she says, welcome to my little hometown. <laughs> oh my God, my female noise is not very good. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And actually if I talk to her again, um, she kind of reminds that I already talked to her and she's now saying, oh, it's you again. What's up, right? So this is what we're going to do in this video. Um, so let me actually uh, cancel the current instance because we want to start where we left off last time, right? So um, hold on a second. I'm going to do an MTM, npm uh, run build and npm start. So they should create um, pretty much a new build um, and start the game where we left off last time. Um, while this building, what I'm going to do is real quick, I want to go through a couple of comments that you guys wrote on uh, on the last video, uh, which I love, by the way, so please keep these comments uh, coming. And the first one is from Sebastian. So Sebastian is saying, uh, looking forward to following this. Will the character map be endless or will characters sort of leave one scene to, to enter another? We'll have to see to do an endless map. So I think, um, Sebastian, I think it's gonna be somewhere between. Um, so I certainly do not want like, you know, the character uh, moving on just a small chunk of the map and then when it reaches the border of, uh, of, the, of that part of the map, the map kind of, you know, moving to the, to the next part. I think that's very old school. Um, I, I, I don't want that. Um, on the other hand side, I think endless map is kind of difficult. I'm not sure if it makes sense from a story point perspective. So I think what we're going to end up with is kind of an, a very, very large map where you can kind of walk around fully, right? So that's that's my idea. Uh, Rumi says, uh, next video team in 4K, so I don't have a 4K camera, unfortunately. Um, you seem so chill and calm while doing this. Thank you. And the game already looks pretty good. I think it can do better. <laughs> but we're still in the, in the beginning, right? And you're saying, I think my idea was groundbreaking. Maybe you could collect funny insults in your comments. So the groundbreaking idea uh, when we commented last time was about uh, monsters insulting the, the main character, right? Um, so if you have any ideas, please keep them coming. Um, so Taha or Tehe, I don't know how to pronounce the name, you're saying, uh, hello, in the same way, I am also making a mistake like this. So you're posting kind of an error message here. Um, uh, Player.hitbox is not a function. So I think I do remember seeing this error myself, um, but I don't remember how to fix that. Um, but I noticed this, uh, this part here, player.hitbox. So most likely, um, in your player. Where is it? Here, yeah, player.ts. Um, you probably put in something like that, right? So player dot hitbox, and then I don't know. You probably change the values. Um, so for some reason, your play instance is probably undefined. So I need to find out why. Um, I don't know why because I don't know your source code. So what I do recommend is um, you go to my GitHub repository. So that's GitHub.com/valnup, um, and then. And uh, there you'll find under repositories. Um, oh my God, it's a picture of me with short hair. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, go to JRPG and then you can just clone my repository and uh, you know compare your source code with mine and I'm pretty sure we'll find your problem. 
the last one is from James. I would prefer if you actually build something rather than just walk through what is already on the template. Um, well, I'm also a beginner with this, so I have no other choice than going through the template and the documentation. Um, however, uh, at the end of the series, so when everything's done, uh, I'm planning to create like one short video um, how to create an RPG um, in like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. That's my ultimate goal. But until then, uh, it's going to take some time. All right. Uh, so that's that. Uh, as I said, please keep the comments coming if you have any questions or anything else to say. But let's start coding. So this is where we left off last time. Remember this huge ass dude um, who was too fat to actually <laughs> fit through the door, right? So, so we have to fix that first. Um, so what I've done is um, from the same page where we downloaded our sprite sheet last time, I did uh, download two more smaller sprite sheets. Um, this one here, all right? So this is going to be our main character. And this sprite sheet here, make it a little bit bigger. This is the other character our uh, player will interact with. And these are a little bit smaller, right? So these are, I think, maybe uh, 16 by 16, something like that. Um, and these will fit in way better into our map because all our elements in our map are already 16 by 16. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, in our game folder, I'm gonna go to source, uh, modules, uh, main, client, and then characters. Um, and here we find our um, old character image, right? So the huge ass dude, um, and our here.ts file. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to assets and I'm going to delete our old uh, character and I'm just going to copy in our new spreadsheet like that. Okay. And I'm going to go back to our source code. And uh, what we need now is I'm going to go to my hero.ts and um, I'm just going to rename the image we are referencing, right? So it's not... Uh, Chawa.png uh, anymore, it's hero.png. Mm, and the frames width has changed a little bit. So, and actually, let me reopen this. So, this is actually now <clears throat> a three times four sprite map. So, we have to change this. It's not four times four anymore. So, we now have a width of three, and the height can uh, leave at it is. I'm going to change the uh, width and height of our image. So we are now working with a uh, width of 46 and a height of 64 pixels. So you have to change that to whatever size uh, sprite uh, you're using. Um, so that's that for our hero. And then I'm just going to um, create a new file here. And I'm going to call it a site char.ts, so this will be our uh, female character, and it's this one here. Um, and actually, you can pretty much copy the same code um, from our here.ts and just paste it into our site char.ts. And the only thing you have to change really is uh, the name of the image we are referencing, so it's going to be site char.png. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, let me see if I forgot anything. Ah, yeah. So in our index.ts um, our client folder, uh, we are importing our hero character, right? So uh, now since we're adding a new character, we also have to import that character. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my site chart.ts. I'm going to rename here at the bottom. Um, the class we're exporting. So I'm going to rename this to, I don't know, site, oh, there's already site char, like that. And our index.ts, I'm going to use it like this, site char. And uh, VS Code is already importing the right file for me, right? So if, if your idea does not do that, you have to do that manually. All right, so, so far so good. Uh, let's try to rerun this. So npm run build and npm start and give it a couple of seconds. And hopefully, if everything went well, this should um, reload 
and our huge ass giant monster character is gonna be replaced with cute little 16 by 16 um, characters. All right. So what the heck did just go wrong? <laughs> That's not what I wanted. So now I'm the female character, which is weird, which is not what I wanted. Um, oh yeah, okay, okay. Is it actually? Here, oh yes, so I forgot to change the ID. So our hero.ts file needs ID hero, so that's okay. But our side char also has ID hero, so I need to change that to side char. And I'm gonna rebuild and restart the game. So what I'm expecting now is to see the uh, main character, so that's gonna be the dude, um, in the middle of the screen, and that character should be able to uh, walk around. We should not see the uh, female character, I hope. Right, reload, there we go. So now we have the dude and he can move around and he cannot fit through the gate. Oh yeah, I remember. So um, I don't know what the default setting for that main character is, but it's too big. Um, and you need to go to your player.ts file and you need to change the hitbox. Um, so it's going to be a player dot set hitbox, and we have 16 by 16 um, sprite maps, so we need a width and height of eight, right? So it's the half of that. And then try again. Just as a reminder, so we do have collision detection on those walls, the gray walls, and we have collision detection on this well but we have no collision um, on the door. So essentially the door is just an image and the game doesn't know that it's there. All right, so um, that's why we should in theory be able to pass through the door. All right, there you go. So let's reload the game. And now we should be able to pass through the door and we can, right? So uh, we bounce off the walls, but we can still pass through the door, which is awesome, which is exactly what you wanted. We're now good with our characters. Now all we need to do now is add our event. Um, and for that, we're going to need a new file. Um, let me show that to you in a second. Because I actually need to copy that and it needs to go to source modules main server event. So let me find that. Uh, server, whoops, server events. And I'll call this, how do I call this? Welcome events.ts. And this is a file which I've prepared ahead cause it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through it, all right? Um, so first we're just doing our imports right nothing too fancy and we're going to give our event a name so you can also call this whatever you want you can call this um i don't know my event one whatever um i'm gonna go with ev1 uh we create a new uh class which extends the rpg event um and there are two hooks in it all right so one is called on in it and the other one is called on action so on init is called uh, when the class gets initialized or actually when the, when the game starts. And uh, with this one, uh, you need to place our character. So remember, this is this um, character here. It's, it's this one here. Um, it's our side character. And uh, again, we're going to set an eight by eight uh, hitbox. Uh, then on action, so on action is called when uh, our main character approaches uh, our young lady here and uh, presses the spacebar, right, in order to talk to her. And then this function gets called. And what I've done here is now is I've added a little bit of logic because what I wanted to do is I didn't want the um, character to always, uh, you know, 
say the same thing. So I want her to say something the first time you talk to her and then remember that you talk to her and say something else the second time. So the first time, um, I want her to say, hey, welcome to my little hometown. Um, and then I'm going to set a variable called welcome and I'm going to set it to true. So this means, hey, uh, you already talked to her. And then the next time uh, the on action method is called or the hook is called, um, then we know, oh, okay, we've already set that variable. And then this time we're going to say, oh, it's you again. What's up? All right. So that's that. Um, I'm going to recompile it and build, uh, sorry, and run the server. Oh, no, wait, I forgot something. I forgot something. So we have defined our event, but we have not imported the event to a game yet. Um, and we also need to place our character, like we need to set the position for our side character. Um, and for that, you just go to uh, medieval.ts and we're going to add a new line to our map data. All right. And it's going to look like this. And uh, it's ha that's the key events. And I'm just going to say, hey, we have a new event. We're going to use a welcome event. Um, I think I need to import it. Yeah. All right. So, oops, save it. And we want our uh, side character to be positioned at these coordinates. So that's going to be a little bit above our main character. All right. So save it and I'm going to rerun it. There you go. So I can now walk around um, and go to our side character spacebar and it's doing nothing. <laughs> um, and this is actually expected. So if I go to our uh, Chrome DevTools, um, then we get an error message and it says, Uncaught, uh, whatever, uh, the GUI named RPG dialog is non existent. Please add the component in the GUI property of the decorator. So, uh, this is a little bit of a cryptic error message, and what it's basically saying it's missing a, a component. And it's saying that because last time, I think it was in our, I don't know, first or second video, um, we did deactivate a couple of default imports in this file in our index.ts, and one of them is this default uh, GUI. So I'm gonna remove the comments here and also the same thing over here, save it. I'm gonna rebuild it. Um, and what this is going to do, it's gonna import a couple of defa default GUI elements. Um, and one of them is uh, something like a, like a text box at the bottom of the window, which shows you know the dialogue of the uh, characters. All right, so let's reload our game. Let's approach a lady at the space bar and there you are. Uh, we can talk to her, hit space again, walk away, come back, hit space, and now she remembers us, which is great. Um, so that's that for, uh, for this episode. I'm not sure yet what we are going to do in our next episode. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, making a better map because this one was just, you know, an experiment, uh, getting our feet wet. So I think we're going to create a bigger map, uh, make it a lot prettier, um, and then move on from there. And uh, let me know where you are with your game. Um, if you're creating one, um, if you're stuck, uh, I'm going to try to help. I cannot always help because keep in mind that I don't know how your source code looks like, um, but I'm going to try my best. Um, until then, see you next time. Bye-bye.